Hey y'all, welcome to March 8th Morning Brew. Uh, there are going to be some changes going forward. I am no longer going to be reading each article verbatim. Uh, I just felt that was kind of stale and there wasn't much personality in the readings. It was kind of just me just reading the articles and then giving my thoughts. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be reading the articles myself and then giving an overview of what's happening. So it's a lot easier to understand and I'm also throwing in my inputs and my own way of explaining things as well. And I feel like that's going to be a lot more entertaining and a lot more fun for me to make because I was at the point where I was like, well, I'm just reading the article at this point and I'm not really doing much else other than that. So I want to also preface that I'm not going to be going over every article either. I'm going to find maybe the top two or three that I enjoy the most from the morning. Go over those and then I will leave a link to that day's morning brew in the description so you can go view the whole thing if you want. I just feel like it was so much information in one video that it was a little daunting and a little overwhelming. So with that being said, I hope you like the changes that are coming to morning brew and we'll hop into it now. We got the NASDAQ down 3.62, the S&P down 2.95, the Dow down 2.37, the 10 year up 4. Bitcoin is down 2.61, and Moderna is down 7.33. So this article is titled Commodities to the Moon. And basically what's happening is because of the war between Russia and Ukraine, there is a dire shortage of critical materials. So have you noticed over the last two years how car companies have been buying used cars for like two times their like normal price? That's because of a global chip shortage that's happening because of the pandemic, how everyone was working from home and people were trying to build their own computers. And also because Bitcoin slash Ethereum mining took off, everyone wanted a piece of that pie. So they went out and bought all the graphics cards they could. And on top of that, because people were no longer working during COVID, it made everything kind of a perfect storm and no chip was able to get made as fast as people were buying them. So basically what this means is this article is talking about that, but even worse now, because of the war between Ukraine and Russia, there is now an even worse dire shortage of critical materials. And you guys can see I have a little highlighter tool that I have now, which is going to be really useful. But basically the, the gist of it is Russia and Ukraine have stopped shipping goods for like food, fuel, and manufacturing from their respective countries. I'm pretty sure if anyone's been on Facebook the past couple days, they've seen gas price posts. This does play a part in it. For example, gas prices in California have increased 51 cents in just the past week to an average of $5.34 per gallon, which is insane. It's not quite that high where I live, but that is still mind boggling to say the least. And now on top of gas, we have food. And the big takeaway here is wheat prices have ballooned more than 50% since the war began and wheat being basically any type of bread, breading material that uses wheat. There could be more foods, but I'm just generalizing it to like breading. So that's definitely something to look out for. Um, if you're shopping and you notice Things are increasing in price. That's just normal inflation. But then this is playing a role on top of that as well. And it's, like I said, potential for the perfect storm. Now, here's the one that is making the most traction online, and that is metals. So Russia is a leading producer of nickel. And uh, from other websites I've read, it's uh, nickel, copper, iron, and others as well. So alongside that, Ukraine produces about 90% of the U.S.'s neon, which is used to create the silicon wafers of silicon. So they obviously can't do that while they're at war, which means the silicon shortage is probably going to get worse than it is right now. So finding a graphics card, finding chips for cars, finding basically any silicon made chip make it even more difficult in the days to come. This also says EV batteries, so for like electric cars and whatnot too. So this is going to be interesting seeing where it goes forward. I have seen some articles as well saying that it's not that big of a deal because there are other manufacturers that can kind of fill in the gaps. But if you think about it, 90% of something, if someone's providing 90% of something, that's going to be a little tricky to just instantly fix. You know what I mean? So there's that news. What's up with Z? 
So this article basically is going over the letter Z that's being found on a lot of Russian vehicles and gear and merchandise and like propaganda, basically. It appears to be like a primary symbol of support of Russia's war efforts. And uh, this article is kind of going over like why that is or what's the meaning behind it and why they chose the, the letter Z. Parts that really interested me the most is that Z doesn't exist in the Cyrillic alphabet. I'm guessing the Cyrillic is the Russian version of our alphabet, but I don't know that for sure. But even though it doesn't exist in their alphabet, they're using it on all their stuff. And uh, even the Kremlin-backed media began selling Z merchandise in a way to support Russian troops, which is like, it must mean something if that's the case, because you'd think this is going to be our logo, basically. So what does it mean? A, uh, a Moscow-based journalist uh, made some tweets that showed Zs on cars and also on social media accounts of civilian supporters. And a Russian gymnast had a Z taped to his leotard. So it seems to be like a status symbol of showing support for Russians, at least. What does it stand for? Many believe the Z stands for Za Pabadu, or for victory, but others think it could mean a way of like avoiding friendly fire. So if there's a Z stamped on your tank, you know it's a Russian tank, and so the Russians aren't going to fire at that tank. That's the one I think is the most realistic, is it's a way for them to differentiate which is which, because if you just have an entire warlike atmosphere, there are bound to be times where things get mixed up and there needs to be a way to differentiate things, and I'm guessing that's the way they went with it. Um, but a lot of people think it's also just a part of Russia's pro-war propaganda efforts and a way to like intimidate uh, the opposing side because they have a way of their side showing support. But I think that kind of backfired on them in a way because Ukraine's support is literally the internet at this point and a bunch of other countries instead of some stupid Z. So I don't know. <laughs> And for what else is brewing, we have the global death toll from COVID topped 6 million deaths yesterday, which is a tremendous number. If you are not vaccinated, I recommend you go do so at this point. My entire family's vaccinated and uh, a majority of us have gotten our booster shots as well. I still need to get mine. I'll be heading out soon to get that. Talk to your doctor first to see if there's going to be any interactions with anything you're taking. But generally, it has been proven to be pretty safe at this point. I think it's in all of our best interests. If most people just go out, get the shot, it's free, and then we'll have this over with before you know it. Next up, Coinbase blocked more than 25,000 Russian wallet addresses suspected to be engaging in bad or illicit activity. And this is both a good and a bad thing. It's good because you don't want crypto to be associated with, you know, illicit activity or illegal things. But then it's also bad because it shows that Coinbase can just block addresses that are linked to things. And that's not what I think crypto is good for. I think crypto is good for non-authoritative acts like this, where one entity can't just block transactions from happening. So with this being the case, I, I don't agree with them blocking the accounts. So that's just my personal viewpoint on it. I think crypto needs to be open completely and there shouldn't be anyone that can say you can't send money to this person or you can't send crypto to this person. I think it's decentralized for a reason and I don't think anyone should be able to block it. Well, okay, hold on. On second thought, this is a little bit of a gray area because if they are using Coinbase wallets to do things, then I can see why Coinbase would be in its best interest to not allow that on their service. But in the spirit of crypto and decentralization, it's a bit of a gray area. I, I love things to be open and decentralized and not being able to be blocked by people, but I do kind of understand where they're coming from, where if it's on their own wallets, like the Coinbase wallets, if they think there's fishy stuff going on there, then I can kind of understand it. So I'm going to see where this one goes. I will update in the future if I, if I hear anything. Next, scientists warned in a new paper the Amazon rainforest might be getting to a drying point. Uh, basically, it's nearing the point where much of it will turn into a savanna. And from my understanding, uh, I don't know exactly what a savanna is, but when I think of it, I think of a, like a close to being a desert in a way. I'm going to look up the definition really quick. A grassy plain in tropical and subtropical regions with few trees. 
so yeah basically it's it's like almost a desert in a way where there's you know not a lot of brush there's not a lot of grass it's basically sand and dirt and a few trees scattered here and there and that's sad from the time i've been alive at least i can tell that there at least is some sort of like climate change to the point of where there are things happening where stuff like this the amazon rainforest is it's drying up for some reason i know there are differing thoughts on the process so let me know what you think in the comments i just would like differing mindsets to hit me up with some ideas and lastly we have dua lipa was hit with a second copyright for a song she made called levitating um and we don't know the outcome of that yet for sure it's just a copyright infringement claim where someone says hey you stole my song or you stole how my song sounds it's just music battles people being people and saying hey you took my work and this person saying no i didn't and it's just a big ruckus at the moment so <laughs> either way that's going to do it for march 8th's morning brew i hope you guys liked the new format i really enjoy doing it this way where i can actually give a lot of my own thoughts on the reading without reading it just word for word because i would spend so much time sitting here reading word for word what it was and then i would like mess up on a word and i would have to restart the whole sentence so i would spend 30 to 40 minutes each morning reading the article and i would mess up and i'd have to reread some more it was really annoying so i personally enjoy this format a lot better i hope you guys do too and i will be leaving the link for the full morning brew in the description if you want to catch up on all the other topics that are normally talked about either way though i enjoyed this hope you guys did as well with that being said, thanks for joining in. Please leave a like if you liked it. Please comment, letting me know your thoughts. And also please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out. All right, I will catch you all tomorrow for Wednesday's Morning Brew. Peace.